guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Pinterest optimization tips for beginners. So for those of you who don't know um, about Pinterest, um, it is a search engine, not a social media platform. So that is the first thing you're going to want to get through your head. Think of Pinterest like Google, like Bing. It's a search engine, okay? People are searching for solutions to their problems on there. So once you've got that through your head, let's get started. Okay, our first tip for today is that you're going to want to optimize your Pinterest name and your bio. So what that means, I want your name to be your name and the name of your blog, not cutie patootie 058, your name and the name of your blog, okay? And your bio needs to explain who you are and what you're doing on Pinterest, okay? I also want you to go ahead and claim your domain name and I want you to make sure your photo is something that is easily recognizable and that is ultimately you. So if you're not starting from scratch, which is totally fine, I started with a Pinterest account that I had started when I was in high school, you're going to want to go through and we're going to start cleaning up your boards, okay? So go through your Pinterest boards, look at everything, and you're going to notice that you probably have a lot of like cutesy names like food trials or travels for the future or whatever it is. We don't want that, okay? We want very searchable, optimized board names. So we want our board names to be practical, okay? So you want it to be Italian countryside villas or destinations in Europe or packing trips for South, packing tips for South America or whatever it is. But you want these to be very distinct, very searchable solutions. So now that we've gone through, cleaned up our boards and renamed them, what we wanna do now is optimize our boards. What does this mean? Click on one of your boards and go and click edit, okay? You'll see the name of your board there and you're also gonna see a board description. You wanna put your board description describing what your board is. I know that sounds very obvious, but what you wanna do is you wanna make sure there's keywords in it. You wanna make sure that things people would be searching for. For example, if it's a board about traveling to Italy, you wanna maybe have your description say something like, this board is all about destinations and travel tips for Italy. The best travel tips for Italy can be found here, and this includes articles on things to see in Italy, where to go in Italy, the best cities in Italy, things about Florence, Rome, whatever. You wanna make sure there are plenty of keywords in there that are naturally sounding so that Pinterest doesn't punish you if they're not natural. You don't wanna keyword stuff, so you don't wanna just wanna put things to do in Italy, things to see in Italy, where to go in Italy. You don't wanna do that. You wanna have it be natural sounding, okay? So the other thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have a category for the board. So if it's a board about Italy travel, you wanna go ahead and select that category as travel. If it's a board about t-shirts, pick fashion. If it's a board about donuts, food, you get the idea. Number four, still talking about Pinterest boards here. I want you to make your boards really specific and also I have some broad ones. So for example, this past year, I went to Salem, Massachusetts for my birthday, which is in October. And when I did that, I wrote an article called visiting Salem in October, you know, a witch city guide. So what I did was I created boards for this article that would be specifically saved and very specific to it. So I have a Salem, Massachusetts travel board. I have a Massachusetts travel board. I also saved it to my United States travel board because yes, that applies. And then I also saved it to a Halloween trip ideas board. So these are all very specific and it's now one of my best performing pins on Pinterest. So if you're writing an article, I want you to get make some really specific boards for that article, okay? And it will really help to when people are searching for that board, it'll help them find your specific article because you've gotten so specific. Okay, so enough talk about boards. Let's talk about your pins themselves. You want to make sure that all of your pins are properly optimized as well. That means you want to make sure they have a title and you want to make sure that in the pin description that you are including keywords. You don't want your pin description to just be the title of your article. You want your pin description to tease the reader and make them click on your pin, but you also want to tell them what they can expect to find in your article. Is there a free packing list in there? Make sure you write that in your pin description. You want to entice the person on Pinterest to click your pin. So optimize it, put keywords in there. If it's a pin about visiting Florence, say best tips for Florence, 
In this article, you can find all of my best Florence travel advice, keyword Florence travel advice, and all of the best things to do in Florence. Things to do in Florence, keyword. Okay, so you get the idea. So you wanna make sure that you're including keywords, but you, again, just like with the board descriptions, you wanna make sure that it sounds casual and that it's natural. You don't want it to just be keyword stuffing the whole way, because Pinterest will punish you for that, okay? So we want good, catchy pin titles, and we want keyword filled natural sounding description. Okay, tip number six. Um, all right, so what you guys are gonna want to be doing is you don't wanna just share your own pins. I know that sounds kind of counterproductive, but you wanna make sure that you are sharing other people's pins as much and probably more than you're sharing your own. So kind of what uh, the rule that I stick to, there's a lot of different methods out there, is I stick to 80-20. I share 80% of other people's pins and 20% of my pins. And so that means for every 80 pins of somebody else's, I share 20 of my own. And no, I'm not sitting on Pinterest all day, just pinning away. I use Tailwind, link is in the description. And with Tailwind, I'm able to schedule my pins and it has been a godsend. It is not a free service. Um, but if I was a beginning blogger and I had to go back and buy one thing, to start out with, it would be it would be Tailwind from the beginning. Like hands down, that is probably one of the few like necessary things. And it, maybe not at first, but like within a couple of months, if you're serious about it, you will understand that Tailwind will be your best friend. And tip number seven is going right along with Tailwind is you need to be using this to share pins when you can't. Okay, so like I said before, I'm using Tailwind as a scheduler. Um, and I like when I write an article, I make probably 30 to 40 pins for that article and I am spacing them out to be scheduled out over the course of two months, three months sometimes. So I have hundreds of pins for this article going out and once they're all scheduled, I don't have to worry about that article for like three months because I have so many scheduled. So use Tailwind to your advantage with this, like you can write an article put it out there in the universe and then you are wash your hands of it you're done with it until you know all those pins run out so that is a immaculate service to have at your disposal okay and one other thing also kind of including tailwind doesn't have to necessarily include tailwind um you need to be using either group boards or tailwind tribes i think that group boards have kind of died um recently i don't think they are as uh, effective as they used to be. Um, however, Pinterest tribes have literally like done wonders for my blog traffic and I've definitely seen an increase um, in that and I've got millions of views on my Pinterest, um, reach on my Pinterest because of Tailwind tribes. So if you decide to get Tailwind, you should look into um, doing the tribes upgrade as well because it is so worth it. Um, if you're serious, I would start off with just the standard tailwind and get used to scheduling and get used to the platform And then once you have more content, I would get into the tribes because They are they they they, they change the game. They really do and also when it comes to using tailwind tribes the reason I even got started in this was like I blah, 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 Excuse me um, when it comes to Tailwind Tribes, the reason I got involved in this was because I took a really great course, such an ebook by uh, The Chic Pursuit, and it changed my views on both Pinterest and, the, not Pinterest, on Tailwind and Tailwind Tribes. And since I took that course um, and started using like the methods that she said that she used to get her blog going, I have seen such a change in the game and I don't even use all of them because she like went crazy and literally was like like would share like unlimited amount of pins to tribes a day like she must have been spending hours on Tailwind I don't necessarily want to do that um maybe eventually if I maybe now that I'm laid off of work because of coronavirus um but eventually I might do that but even just like implementing half of the what she did I have seen such a change in my Pinterest and my views from Tailwind because of this. So I will link her ebook down below. It's only like $37, totally worth the money if you're interested in that. 
Okay, and just two more. Um, the second and last one, number nine, make sure that you have a best of your blog Pinterest board. I know that sounds super simple and kind of self-explanatory, and I know a lot of people probably already have that, but I also see a lot of people who don't. Um, basically, all that means is I have a best of the boho traveler board on Pinterest, and it just has all of my blog posts on there pretty much because all of my blog posts are the best. And the final Pinterest optimization tip, um, don't get put in Pinterest jail. <laughs> there are several different ways you can do this, um, but the main thing is you don't wanna be over pinning. So if you haven't used your Pinterest account in like seven years and you only pin like two things a month, maybe don't start pinning 30 to 40 times a day because Pinterest might freak out and put you in jail. Don't pin too much of the same pin. Um, I don't know. Sometimes Pinterest, like, I started pinning a lot more than I usually did about two years ago, and Pinterest freaked out and put me in Pinterest jail, jail, suspended my account, and I had just started getting a lot of traffic. Like, one of my pins went viral, and I was getting, like, a thousand views on this blog post a day, and Pinterest, like, freaked out, put me in jail. I lost all traffic from that article, never got it back. I emailed Pinterest and they did not reinstate my account and I thought everything was lost. I was devastated. And then I emailed them a second time and basically like threatening them and telling them that I didn't do anything wrong and that I would take it to court if they didn't. And eventually they gave me my account back, but I was so stressed out. I was like in Las Vegas on vacation and like dealing with Pinterest. It was ridiculous. So word of advice, don't go from zero to a hundred. Take your time, uh, ease into things. Don't get put in Pinterest jail because it sucks. It is horrible. It is a very terrible feeling as a blogger to literally see your traffic go from hundreds of or thousands of views a day, literally to like almost nothing. It was heartbreaking. So don't do it. Would not recommend. So uh, the final video didn't record. But yeah, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and don't forget to uh, like this video and subscribe.